Now today we're going to go over on how you can test and replace the temperature sensor inside a refrigerator. In my case, the entire fridge section was becoming all frozen. So the water, milk, fruit, veggies, things like that. And it was just a uh, worn out sensor. So the first thing is you may be thinking, how do you find the sensor? So what I did in my case is I quickly found the label showing the model number. So in my case, Kenmore, 795 so on and so forth so what i did on google is i just typed in kenmore 795 temperature sensor and very quickly i found a number of diagrams showing where the sensor lived or where the sensor lives so in my case it's right behind this ice box cover and in fact it's right there so let me clean all of this up the first thing actually is i just want to turn off the power going to the fridge Okay, so open up the cover, remove the ice storage. Okay, and then to get access to the sensor, I just have to remove one, two, three Phillips size fasteners and then this peels back. So just a long Phillips size screwdriver here. Okay, two more here, and then let me just put down the camera, and we'll come right back. So all of those fasteners are removed, and if I try to remove this, you see how it's sort of stuck? And that's because there's a harness connector in the rear of this assembly. So let me put the camera down. Actually, I'll just do this so you can sort of watch me do it. Make sure you can see this, okay. So what I'm doing, I'm just snaking my hand back here, my left hand. And I'll give you a different shot in a second, but there's a harness connector that this whole assembly plugs into. And that's what I'm looking for right now. Okay. So here's the entire assembly. And you see, it just plugs, there's a little connection point there. Here's the temperature sensor. But that little guy, just so you can understand how this works. Okay, so this sensor, this plug I should say, this harness plug, simply plugs into this guy right here. But here's our sensor. We can remove this as well. And then we can quickly test the sensor. Okay. Now fortunately, testing the sensor is incredibly easy. You simply need a digital multimeter. This cost me $20 off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description box below in case you do need a multimeter. And the wonderful thing about these meters is you can do so many different tests, but in our case, we are doing an ohms or a resistance test. So just set it to the omega symbol on the multimeter. Okay, very easy. The other thing I purchased off Amazon, not required, but just makes it a little bit easier, two wires with alligator ends. The reason behind that, actually I'll show you that right now. So every multimeter, they have two leads, a black lead and a red lead. Okay, so you plug in your black, you plug in your red lead. So this is ready to go. And if you look at the multi, I'm sorry, if you look at the temperature sensor, you have two metal prongs. So all that you're doing is you're taking the two leads from the multimeter and you're touching these two prongs. Now to make it easier, this is where I have these alligator clips. Again, it's not required, but I can just simply clamp on one prong. And let's say this goes to the red lead, doesn't matter. In other words, it doesn't, don't worry about if you're thinking if I somehow reverse touch everything, it doesn't make a difference. You're just taking a resistance reading, it's not a volt reading. And let's see what we have here. So watch the meter. And in our case, we have 3.1 kilo ohms. So I have a chart here. I'll also type this out in the description box below. So roughly, it's roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So that's roughly 20 C. So we should be at 3.1 kilo ohms. We're at 3.1 kilo ohms, okay? So this is a working temperature sensor. Now watch, if I reverse these, 
So if I put the white lead here, it does not make a difference, okay? It does not make a difference whatsoever. So in my case, I was not getting a reading on the old sensor. So I purchased another one, it was like 15 bucks, and now we're up and running again. So I hope this clearly helps a number of you out there, and thank you for watching.